All right, everyone, we talk about Trump first today. Uh, he is going to be starting his own social media platform. At least that's what people close to him are saying. We're talking about a couple of months from now. Uh, first and foremost, though, if you're watching this video on YouTube, there will be a pinned comment with links to four other video hosting sites that I use. I make two of my videos every single day just on those sites and don't put them on YouTube. Sometimes it's because the topics are verboten on YouTube. And most of the time, though, it's just to incentivize people to use alt tech. Interesting, considering the fact that we'd have this particular story to cover. Now, I have two major thoughts about Trump starting a social media platform, well, kind of three. The first is he's the man to do it. He's got the kind of money and resources and audience to make such a thing work, potentially, uh, which would blindside big tech because you would end up having almost overnight, potentially, if it's handled properly, if, he, if everything is set up properly beforehand, the right people for the right jobs are in their positions and ready to go, he would be able to compete with whatever sites he's competing with. My, my opinion would be it'd probably be like a, a Twitter-Facebook fusion. It's funny because technically Twitter's not really social media, it's anti-social media. <laughs> just, so, just so we're aware. And also um, not, not necessarily going to compete with like an Odyssey or a BitChute because of course that, that side of things like the vlogging experience and even blogging, a little bit different from like what you do typically on Facebook or Twitter, mass communication messages and shit. Uh, would I use such a site? Potentially. It depends on the functionality. Just because Donald Trump happens to be the site owner and it will presumably be a pro-free speech platform doesn't necessarily mean that the functionality is there. For instance, there's a reason I no longer use Brighteon actively. I like the site. I communicated with the people that ran it and they went out of their way to help me. But at the end of the day, as a content creator, as someone whose main goal is to reach an audience uh, and retain it, uh, it wasn't really offering me the capability of doing that simply because of the site functionality and, and engagement being as it is. Still support it, it's just that with a limited amount of time to dedicate to my work, I, can, I have to pick and choose sort of where to use, uh, what platforms to use. Would I add another one without redacting one of my existing platforms? I don't know. And so it gets into that. My third thought is that this might not, however, be particularly good for existing alt tech sites. For instance, what if its functionality is fundamentally similar to Facebook, uh, something akin to that? Uh, well, it would be a competitor of Minds.com, a site that I already use, have a significant audience on, um, and, and would therefore potentially have part of its market share torn away. Um, and, and again, Trump has a virtually inexhaustible kind of budget, uh, potentially that he could use for this. Uh, even if his net worth of billions doesn't represent actually cash on hand, and this is something that I've pointed out multiple times, leftists don't understand, a billionaire typically is not making a billion dollars in the year. Uh, this was very m mystifying to people when they said, well, Trump only made like a couple million, hundred million dollars back in like 2001 or something. I'm thinking to myself how out of touch a person has to be and, and obviously not necessarily the sort of part person that you'd allow to budget things for you. Um, he would still, he could sell one building, any of his buildings, golf courses, anything like that, and walk away with probably 50 million bucks. He's, he owns some of the larger buildings uh, in, in many of the cities of the world. All he has to do is sell one of them. He doesn't even really have to do that, though. He probably does have the ability to have at least tens of millions a year dedicated to that cause, which would, again, though, my, my worry would be that it undercuts existing alt-tech sites uh, that people have already popularized and, are, and which are quickly growing. However, if he manages to create, fundamentally, an alt-tech site, um, and it's, you know, free speech geared, uh, we'll see what happens. I'd probably get an account uh, on this social media platform. Although, it, again, as far as the actual social media side being like interacting with your friends and stuff like sharing news links, I don't really do that so much. I mean, like even on Twitter, what the fuck was I doing? I was trolling, basically. <laughs> it's, funny, it's basically a giant flame war anyway. It's a dumpster pile. Uh, that's why people use it. Uh, that's why its alternatives got slowed down and people keep returning to the site even when they've gravitated away from it for ideological or, or work-related purposes. Um, because it's such a dumpster fire, it's hard to look away, so to speak. They're not there for a kind conversation. They're not there for intellectual pursuits. Uh, so we'll see what exactly happens with it. But it really depends on what form the site takes and how competently it's set up. Because you could imagine... I mean, here's the other thing. Here's another thought. 
second it goes online, it's going to get hit by the hardest attack, the hardest raid possible. They're going to need to have incredible site security. They're going to need to be, overbuild it to make sure that it can keep up with the traffic because you're going to have a million leftists attacking the site. You, ju you know that it'll be organized. People, all the craptivists of the left, all the Holtz and Summers of the world will be dogpiling it. The SPLC and the ADL will be using their bots and their spam trolls and shit. And the Antifa will be on there bitching and whining. And it'll, it'll be funny because it'll almost be an in initial test, not only of the site's integrity, uh, but actually of the ideological integrity. Because if it's going to be incepted as a, we're pro-free speech, as long as it's not illegal, it's allowed to be here. When Antifa shows up and starts calling people racial slurs and, and posing as far writers, and when Nazis show up and stuff like that, we'll see how ideologically pure uh, the, the free speech actually is. It'll be very, very interesting. One thing, though, because it'll have virtually an exhaustible fiscal backing, at least potentially, and Trump's like, fuck it, uh, he, he could win the battle. Um, sim he could win the war for free speech tech almost. Uh, it would be nice to see, potentially, a partnership between his front and, and other sites, actually. Sort of a nexus, a confederacy of websites dedicated solely to free speech. If he were to do that, by the way, it'd be one of the greatest con contributions to promoting free expression that we've had in decades. I think it'd be great. Um, it, I, I hope that it works. I hope that uh, nothing but positivity comes from it. And considering that I, I think Trump is more cerebral when it comes to the First Amendment, the philosophical underpinnings of free expression than many of his contemporaries in government. Um, I, I would rather him be doing this than almost any of these other people. He's the one with the money to do it. It'd be funny if Bloomberg has like sour grapes. He's like, oh, Trump's website. We need to make a knockoff of it quickly to compete with him. We'll call it Left Tube or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. You see them, Bloomberg will pour money into it and it'll fail just like his uh, presidential bid and his attempt to pump $100 million into the Florida election. That was a really funny one. Sorry, Mikey. That's about all. Peace out.